Welcome to this service from St. Ninian's Old Parish Church on this, the fourth Sunday in Lent. Wherever you are joining us from, it is good for us to be able to worship God as the one people. Following the announcement by the Scottish Government last Tuesday, church buildings can, if COVID-19 statistics continue to go in the right direction, reopen for communal worship on Sunday the 28th of March, Palm Sunday. The number able to attend will be restricted to 50. So while I look forward to having people with me here in the sanctuary, I would also encourage those who have access to the internet and who are happy to remain at home on a Sunday for a while longer to do so. In Psalm 107, the psalm for today, we read these words, Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Let us worship God. We sing to His praise and glory, hymn 484, 484, Great God, Your love has called us here.
hear the Word of God as it is found in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 3, and reading from verse 14 to verse 21. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. Amen. And thanks be to God for this reading of his own holy word. I think it can be safely said that the best known verse in the Bible is for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. It is such a familiar verse that it is often simply referred to as John 3, 16. Martin Luther called this verse the gospel in miniature, and Professor William Barclay described it as everybody's text. It has been said that in this one verse we find the very essence of the gospel. For me, it tells us firstly the scope of God's love. You recall the words of the much-loved children's song, Wide, Wide as the Ocean. We enjoy singing it here in the church in normal times, and of course there are great actions that accompany the song. It describes God's love as being as high as the heavens above, and then as deep as the deepest sea. That is a perfect description of God's love. Its scope is immense, so immense, it cannot be measured. Sometimes, people indicating their love for a family member or friend will say, love your loads. I imagine it's heartwarming when someone says that to you. But if no one has said that to you, rest assured there is one who does. God loves you with a love that defies description. And because He loves you, He cares about you. 
and he wants to be involved in every aspect of your life. Julian of Norwich said this, God loved us before he made us, and his love has never diminished and never shall. My dear friends, love is a word that can be often spoken, but it can have varying degrees of meaning. There will be those who will love us so long as we do their bidding. There will be those who will love us as long as we say and do what they want us to say and do. There will, in other words, be those whose love is conditional. But God's love is not like that. Indeed, can I put it to you, there is no love like this love, the love of God. It is unconditional, and as the psalmist booted, it endures forever. Isn't that a wonderful thought? It will never end. It will never die. It goes on and on for time and eternity. The scope of God's love, for God so loved the world. Secondly, this wonderful verse speaks to us of the depth of God's love. He gave His one and only only Son. Some of you will be familiar with the King James translation, which speaks of God's only begotten Son. This is a word that is very interesting. It means single, unique, or one of a kind. Thus, it tells us that Jesus is uniquely the Son of God, and God gave Him for you and for me and for the world. Today is Mothering Sunday, the day we think of our own mother and of mothers across the years. For most of us, we think of a mother as someone who will do absolutely anything for her children, and who, in certain circumstances, will go without, that her children might have what they need. A mother's love is unconditional. It gives and it goes on giving without thinking of the cost. God's love is like that, only better. Augustine, the church father, put it well when he wrote, God loves each one of us as if there was only one of us to love. Isn't that worth thinking about and remembering? God loves each one of us as if there was only one of us to love. Isn't it sadly the case that often in our lives we can give grudgingly of ourselves in the cause of the gospel? We put ourselves first, and we fit God in where it suits us. Likewise, we turn to Him when we need Him, but often 
we forget him when all is well. Thankfully, God is not like that with us. He gave the world the very best he had to give. He gave himself in the person of his only Son, the unique, the one and only, Jesus Christ. The scope of God's love, the depth of God's love. Finally, let me speak about the blessing of God's love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. What is the blessing of God's love? Ultimately, it is the gift of life everlasting. Sadly, a number of people with, in my own congregation and parish are very unwell at this time, and a number have passed from among us in recent days and weeks and months. One lovely woman who died stated some time before that she wanted John 3.16 to be inscribed on her gravestone. I was greatly touched by that. Even as her life here on earth drew to a close, she knew there is that fuller life beyond the veil, the blessing of God's love, eternal life. Billy Graham, the well-respected American evangelist, once said, when you hear reports that I have died, don't you believe it. I will be more alive than ever. I will only have changed my address. Today, as we gather at the table of the Lord, we will share in the sacrament of Holy Communion. That is special in itself, but our Lord has told us it is but a foretaste of the banquet to come, of that great feast in which we shall all one day share when in our Father's house we gather in the presence of all the saints, among them those whom we ourselves have known and loved, and we will see our Lord, the one who died, the one who triumphed o'er the grave, and the one who rose victorious in the strife for those he came to save. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We sing as our communion hymn, hymn 123, hymn 123, God is love, let heaven adore him.
the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. This is the Lord's table. He invites all who love him to sit with him and share in this joyful feast. Hear the words of the institution of the Lord's Supper as they are recorded by St. Paul. The tradition which I handed on to you came to me from the Lord himself. That on the night of his arrest, the Lord Jesus took bread. And after giving thanks to God, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in memory of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper and said, This cup is the new covenant sealed by my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this in memory of me. For every time you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. As the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, I take these elements of bread and wine to be set apart from all common uses to this holy use and mystery. And as he gave thanks and blessed, let us draw near to God and offer him our prayers and thanksgiving. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, we bow before you, aware of our unworthiness even to call upon you, and confessing our selfishness, our pride, and our failure to live out our faith, we seek your mercy and forgiveness. Gracious God, worthy of praise from every lip, we give you thanks that in the fullness of time you sent your one and only Son not to condemn the world, but to save it. For our Saviour's birth, life, death, and resurrection, we praise you, and we look to that day with great hope when we will see him again, seated at your right hand on high. Loving God, you love the world, and despite its folly, you love it still. We pray this day for your world. May there be an end to all that divides people, and irrespective of color or creed, may we learn to celebrate our common humanity, and so live in harmony one with another. Almighty God, on this Mothering Sunday, we thank you for mothers, our own mothers and mothers everywhere. We thank you for all they do or once did, all they give or once gave, all they mean and will always mean. Gracious God, rejoicing in your love which is beyond measure, we pray for our families and friends. 
for those who are sick, for the lonely and the weary, the anxious and the confused, the tired and the sorrowing. Into the darkness may your glorious light shine, that the hearts of all will rest secure in the knowledge of your loving care. Almighty God, we pray for your church as we give thanks for the faithful in every age and those dear to us who dwell now with you. We ask that your people today may ever walk in the light and that your redeeming love may be reflected in our daily lives. And now, O God, we seek your blessing upon these your gifts of bread and wine, which we set apart to this holy use and mystery. May the bread which we break be for us the communion of the body of Christ, and the cup of blessing which we bless the communion of the blood of Christ, that receiving them in faith, we may grow in grace to the glory of your holy name. These things we humbly ask through Jesus Christ our Lord, and together, in our respective places, we say the prayer our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever. Amen. The Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is broken for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant sealed by my blood. Drink of it, all of you. Taste and see, the Lord is good. Happy are those who trust in him. Eat the bread of heaven, drink the cup of salvation. grace and peace 
of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, be with you all. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks and praise for the dying and undying love of our Savior, Jesus Christ. In your great goodness, you have brought us into communion with him and with all who love him, and you have made us heirs of your everlasting kingdom. By your grace, may we continue in this holy fellowship and live our lives to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our final hymn is hymn 182, a hymn most appropriate as we reflect on God's love and on this Mothering Sunday on the love of our mothers. Now thank we all our God. May God's love which endures forever and the peace of God which is beyond all understanding guard your hearts 
and thoughts in Christ Jesus, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.